Welcome to the third part of the on-page SEO module where we're going to talk about internal links. Now again, if you haven't already, go back and watch the previous two videos in this module because really if you don't understand what's talked about in them, then you may not understand everything in this video. Now starting with the absolute basics, as always, what are internal links? Internal links are essentially hyperlinks, as in links on a web page, to other resources on your website. And it's really that simple, but let me explain. If you're not 100% sure what this means, open Wikipedia, and my editor can show that right now, and you'll see link after link after link to various different resources on the Wikipedia site. And you can just click these and go to the next page and the next page, and there's an endless list of links because they have a ton of content or an encyclopedia. Well, all these links you're clicking, those are called internal links. They're simply links to other pages on your own website, so other resources on your own website. It's that simple. Now, why this is important is because this is one of the easiest changes you can make to quickly increase your rankings. It's really fundamental for SEO, it can really make a massive difference relatively quickly. Now to understand why they are so effective, you really have to understand how search engines look at them and what ranking factors are looking at in terms of internal links specifically. So let's go for it. Well, if you remember back to the first video in this course, we introduced this friendly little spider here, which is what Google sends out to crawl the web and find websites and pages to add to their search engine. Now, one of the ways they do this is by identifying and following links. So if you have a link here from page one over here, they'll click that link, go through to page number two, and they'll see another link, okay, let's click that link and go through to page number three. So they're following links here, but it actually, there's much, much more than that, okay? So the first thing there is, yeah, they're gonna follow the links and they're gonna find your pages. That is great, you need to have internal links exactly for that reason, but there is more than that, right? So there's crawling, but it's also page rank and it's also relevant. So let's break down exactly how all of this works. So starting with PageRank, most people have heard of PageRank, most people think PageRank is outdated, it is not, okay? PageRank is now an internal measurement only used by Google to determine page level and domain authority. So if you ever use a tool like Ahrefs, they have the domain rating or URL rating, or if you use Mars, they have domain authority. These are all basically the same idea. They're trying to measure externally, not using Google's own tools, um, how much an authority this page or website is. Now, why this is important, because we'll dive deeper into that later in the backlinks module, why this is important is because PageRank passes via links. Meaning, if we have a very, very basic example, just to show how this works, then from link one or page one to page number two, some of that page rank is being passed through. Now, how much exactly? It depends, okay? But we'll just say in this example, we have like half going through. And then you have another link on this page from page two to page three, so half of that again is being passed through to page three, right? Now, is that exactly how it works? Is it exactly half? No, okay? But the basic idea is, is that page rank is being passed via links. So that's important because if you want this page to be strong from a page rank perspective, then you need to build internal links to this page, not only external as in backlinks to this page, you also wanna have as many internal links that are relevant as you can possibly build. Now the other thing to also consider here is that backlinks will also increase the page ranks. Again, it passes for all links, internal or backlinks, right? Meaning that if you have a link from the BBC, which is a domain rating of 93, it's a massive, massive website, it's a good quality link, well that is also passing through page rank to your page. Meaning that this page specifically here is probably gonna be pretty strong because it has a backlink from the BBC. Therefore, because this page rank is really high on this page specifically, you also wanna leverage this page to build internal links to other pages, because again, the page rank is higher than it's getting passed through from the start. So again, this may be getting a little bit complicated, but the basic idea is page rank is passed via links. Internal links, as in what we're talking about right here, links between your own website, or backlinks, other websites linking to yours. So by utilizing internal links, we can increase the page rank of that page and deliberately send it to pages that are more important than 
others. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, please do me a quick favor, go below and click that little like button, just give it a little tap, and it's gonna really help us out with promoting these videos and promoting this entire course. Again, we're doing this entirely free, every single module, more coming every single week. Now, whether or not you really understood that description of page rank and really how all that works, the basic idea is one, more internal links equals a stronger page, again, a higher page rank, and two, links from stronger pages, as in links from pages that have a higher page rank themselves, are again going to be more effective, right? So more links are better, and links from better pages are, well, better, right? Very, very simple to understand. The complexity of page rank and everything, it's just how it all works. If you don't understand that, at least understand these two things. More links are better, links from stronger pages are also, well, better. Okay, now going back to these points again, so we covered crawl and at this point, we've covered page rank. Next up is relevance. Well, what is relevance from an internal links point of view? There is multiple factors, okay? Number one is your anchor text. Now, if you don't know what anchor text is, it's simply the text of the link. So let's play a little fun game here. We've got a little game show, play some game show music. I don't know if you can actually do that. Um, I'll leave that to the editor. And here's what we're gonna do, okay? So I'm gonna show you a few different anchor texts here. So this is a text of links. So you can see the first one here is pink, okay? Now the next one is fluffy elephant. The next one is pink and fluffy. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to guess what the page is about, okay? Show the next one, pink fluffy elephant, and the next one, pink and fluffy elephant, right? Now this one's pretty easy because I just deliberately made it easy because I just having fun with it, but it's of course a page about pink fluffy elephants. So the long story short here is that when you link it to pages, anchor text is a signal of the page content and the relevance, so go ahead and use kind of optimized anchor text. Now that doesn't necessarily mean every single time, use pink fluffy elephant. Sometimes it can be pink, sometimes it can be fluffy elephant, sometimes it can be pink fluffy elephant, sometimes it can be pink and fluffy elephant, and various other variations just like that. But the basic idea is that it should be optimized to be what the content is about. Now does that mean it has to be every single time? Well sometimes maybe it actually makes sense to say click here for certain types of links. But I'm just saying in general, if you wanna have relevance, then you realistically should try and include that, that main keyword, that topic of the page in the anchor text. Again, that is the text of the link. Next up, we have linking from page, as in the page linking to this page that we're looking at. For example, if you go back to that diagram from before, then page one is linked to page two. So page one also matters as a topic to send relevance. So again, let's roll the, the game show and let's try another one, okay? So first one, hoofed mammals. Second one, 11 faceted Nile River plants and animals. Again, this is just the URLs of the pages that link to this page. Next one, Nile River, plant and animal life. Next one, slash animal slash Hikami hippopotamus. I'm not exactly sure if I'm saying that correct. Next one, slash place, slash Firunga National Park. Okay, so based on this, you have three seconds right now. Start the countdown. Can you guess what this page is about? Three, two, one, time! If you guessed hippopotamus, then you are correct. This is a page about hippopotamus. Right, now if you guessed that, good job, give yourself a round of applause, leave a comment below, hit the like button, and do whatever. Congratulations, you don't win anything, but you can feel good about yourself. Okay, so that's what it's about. And again, the point is, is that the page that's linking to you also can be a sign of relevance. Now again, it's not always 100% clear. I deliberately picked a few that are a little bit more clearer in that example. It's not always 100% clear, but generally speaking, you can determine the page's topic by looking at the page that links to it. But there's also another thing to consider with those internal links, and that is the location of the links. If you have a look at this, this is Chewy.com, a big pet food store, and you can see here they have this massive menu, which is pretty standard with any sort of e-commerce store. Now, does that mean that because in the menu they have a link to dog food, that this page that you're on right now is about dog food? No, right? It could be completely unrelated. It could be about reptiles, right? And reptiles is, is kind of related and that's about pets, but we wouldn't exactly call that a related page, right? So no, because a link's in the menu doesn't mean that it's relevant, right? So also, there is also this kind of the, basically the location of the link, which also has kind of a weight added to it in terms of how important that is. So again, those types are content, navigation, sidebar, and footer. 
Now again, I've already put this in order of what I think is most important, being the content links, as in contextual links within the content, like Wikipedia we saw previously, are the most effective link. Like just altogether backlinks and channel links, whatever, they are the most effective type of link. Next up is navigation, like we showed before with the navigation menu in the previous slide. Again, top navigation is really, really important for users. So I think it's pretty important. I would deliberately link to any page from a usability experience that I think is important for them to be able to find and be easy to navigate. Now again, is this as important as content? No, when I'm measuring internal links, I'm not really looking at this, but I am looking at this from a user experience point of view. Then you have the sidebar. Again, this can be very, very important for users, especially in e-commerce where you have all the filters and navigation options. It can be very, very useful for users, probably not so beneficial for search engines. Unless again, it's like an e-commerce store and you're actually indexing all those filters and options, and it could arguably be more important than the side. But realistically, if I really want a page to have internal links and actually rank, I care more about the content. I don't really care about any of these other elements. And by far, the absolute worst is going to be your footer links. Now again, people use footer links and you actually get results from using footer links on the right types of sites when it comes to like backlinks and everything like that. But generally speaking, the links in the footer as in right at the bottom of the page are lower quality. And again, that doesn't mean you don't have any because they can be important, especially for things like, hey, your delivery information, your warranty guarantee information and uh, terms and conditions, privacy policy, all this sort of stuff. It makes sense to have them there and important to have. But generally speaking, they add little to no value to search engines and it's really just low quality from, again, an SEO perspective. Now diving into the actual strategy, here is how it works and it's very, very simple. Build internal links to every page, again, ideally within the content if it actually matters. If it doesn't, then you may want to consider like no index in that page or something to tell search engines, hey, please don't add this to your search engine. Next up, we want to make sure to have internal links to relevant pages, meaning that if they're completely irrelevant, you probably don't want to link those pages together. So it's like, yeah, build more, build to every page, but obviously where relevant essentially is apply that rule. And generally speaking, here's a good strategy, right? Prioritize building contextual links as in links within content from the strongest and most relevant pages to the most important pages to rank. Meaning that if your page is really, really important to rank, the strongest page on your site is usually going to be the home page it has the highest page rank because it has the most backlinks pointing to it. So if you really, really want to rank a page that's really, really important, you probably want to have an internal link from your home page. Okay, so prioritizing, looking at your backlink profile, which pages are the most strongest from a page rank perspective, and then which pages can you link to from that because they're very, very important, but again, where relevant. Now, another thing to consider when we get into this whole relevance thing is what people call silo structures. So if you have a look at this little diagram right here, so this presume you have a site about, I don't know, like marketing or SEO or something like that. This is just what came up from our keyword research data originally we did with Keyword Cupid. And you can see here, we have affiliate networks and black hat marketing. Now within each of those topics, we have multiple blog posts or pages, right? We have in affiliate networks, we have best affiliate programs, we have high ticket affiliate programs, we have dog affiliate programs, and we have credit card affiliate programs. So these are all just types of affiliate programs, right? Under black hat marketing, we have black hat ways to make money, content locking CPA, make money spamming, black hat SEO, right? Now these are essentially what we call like topic clusters. So you have a topic cluster for affiliate networks and you have a topic cluster for black hat marketing. Now what you wanna do with these is basically internal link within a single cluster or silo only. So the affiliate networks page should absolutely link to each of those pages, right? This is called like a hub, right? It's linking to all the pages that are about affiliate marketing, about affiliate networks. Likewise, the Black Hat Marketing page will link to all the Black Hat Marketing posts, right? Even though it's not directly in the title Black Hat Marketing, it's still part of that overall silo, like Content Lock and CPA doesn't say Black Hat, but it's part of that overall silo. So again, this would link to these pages. Likewise, those pages would probably link back to the overall head of that silo, the top of that silo, right? The hub of that silo. For example, if you're on the Credit Card Affiliate Programs page, it makes sense to say, hey, are you looking for more affiliate networks? click here to go to affiliate networks list, our overall hub page, right? You write it better than that, but that's the basic point, right? So they will link down and they will link up. 
And also, you may even link the pages between each other, right? So dog affiliate programs may also link over to higher ticket affiliate programs, right? Maybe they're relevant in some way when you're writing your content, right? But what wouldn't happen here, what wouldn't happen is dog affiliate programs wouldn't be linked to make money spamming, right? Or credit card affiliate programs wouldn't be linked to black hat ways to make money. So you're keeping the links within a single silo. Now, the reason this is important is because it allows you to build up a ton of relevance for this overall topic because in this single cluster or silo, you have a load of different pages and they're all internal linking between each other. And you're not contaminating that, for lack of a better term, um, with other topics and getting it all kind of mixed up, right? Now again, do you have to be this strict? Does it actually have to be this strict? Maybe this can be kind of relevant, right? Content lock and CPA is actually a form of affiliate marketing, right? So maybe they can actually be internal links. It's not that big a deal, but generally speaking, this is what a silo structure is. And it's good to have a structure in mind when you're building out your site and all these different topics like that. Usually, you probably just start with, hey, we're just gonna be about affiliate networks, but as you add an additional silo, then this is how you wanna build it. And even from there, the affiliate networks and Black Hat marketing pages probably wanna have links from your homepage, because again, that is usually the most important page on the website. Now, one tool we can use to make this way easier is Keyword Cupid, which we use in the Keyword Research module. If you remember when we used it previously, we only looked at the page theme and the supporting keywords within that overall page theme. The problem with that approach is that we completely ignored this thing here called silo confidence. Now, if you remember, I just mentioned silo structures before because this is what it is, okay? So we can see here, this is a silo for all of these together here. So one silo would be domain appraisal GoDaddy, domain name appraisal, what is my domain worth? Another silo would be define niche markets, profitable niches, right? This is just one. Another silo, best video format, what video format for YouTube? Another silo, these two here. Another silo, these two, and so on. So again, would I just copy this blindly and just use this data? No, I'd probably try and add extra things or remove things and move it around where I think is best. But this basically tells you from the start what they recommend doing, and it just saves you time. Another example, we have three examples from this, remember? Another example, this is a silo. Battery power jigsaws, best jigsaw. Another one, here's four of them, it's a bit better, right? So best cordless circular saw, circular saw reviews, corded versus cordless circular saw, small circular saw. Right, and so on, another one here, you can see four of them, and so on. So it's just recommending our silos for us just to make this way easier. You also have the small silos tab and so on, but I'm not gonna use that. Another example from an e-commerce store here, you can see here they have USN Diet Fuel Ultra Lean, USN Diet Fuel Ultra Lean Reviews, USN Diet Fuel Ultra Lean Diet Fuel Two Kilos, right, and so on. Seamless Fun UK, Seamless Underwear, Chic Belt UK, Chic Belt, Weightlifting Belt Sports Direct. Okay, you wouldn't actually target those keywords, but you get the point here. You can see kind of all these different silos that they're recommended for this overall page and all these different keywords, right? So that's basically how Keyword Cupid works. It's just an additional way of helping you decide what all of those silos are. Again, they do this automatically, so it just saves you some thinking time, essentially. But in short, guys, build more internal links. That's it, like just build more internal links. Like if you just do that, you will rank better. And now everyone knows this, so the question obviously is, yeah, that's great, but how, right? Well, here's when to build internal links, okay? One, it's an important page that you actually want to rank. So you want to rank this page better, it's an important page, okay? That's the first reason. Two, a page has a low number of outlinks, and I'll explain what that is in a moment. Three, the page has a low number of inlinks, including orphan pages. And four, the page depth is high relative to its importance. So let me explain what those things mean. First up is inlinks and outlinks, okay? So inlinks and outlinks are basically just referencing what it means as in, is it a link out from this page or is it a link into this page? So these links here, open source artificial intelligence, open AI, translates and so on, they are outlinks because we're on that page and they're linking out to another pages. Whereas if you click this link here that says indistinguishable from that of humans, well now it's an inlink because we're on this page, we're on page number two here, and it's an inlink from page number one. So it just explains whether it's an inlink or an outlink, but if you say, hey, build a link on this page, do you mean build a link into this page or do you mean build a link out from this page, right? So it just explains the difference, inlink or outlink. 
Now I've used a basic tool like Screaming Frog, which you introduced previously. We open this up, I did a quick crawl of my lionzero.com site, click HTML here, so it's only HTML pages. Scroll across to like way further across, let's just grab this somewhere over here somewhere. So you can see here they have inlinks, unique inlinks, outlinks, and unique outlinks. Now, how we can basically use this is we can scroll through and see, okay, this one only has two inlinks, okay? So maybe we can do something more to increase the number of inlinks to this page. Likewise, you can see here, pretty much all of these have a low number of outlinks because obviously it's a small website. And then some of these have zero outlinks. So you can see here, like zero and zero, right? Now, if we wanted to build links from this page, it was actually a real indexable page, then we can also say, okay, this has zero outlinks and it's relevant to these topics. Let's use this to build some links, right? Because there's, there's a low number of outlinks on the page, right? So basically we're using all this information we have, like the backlinks to this page and stuff like that, and determining, okay, which pages should we build links from based on the number of outlinks, based on the backlinks, based on the topics. And then also looking at the number of inlinks and saying, okay, which links are important that have a low number of inlinks can we prioritize building more inlinks as an in internal links into this page? That's basically what it is. Again, I wouldn't actually use this inside of Screaming Frog. Normally I would export all this data and run through it in spreadsheets, but I just wanna keep this video really, really simple so you just understand what exactly I'm looking at. You can also click any of these pages here. So if I just go ahead and click this one, go down to inlinks down the bottom. You can also see exactly what those links are. So it says from page this, to page this. Obviously, this is not a page that we actually intend in ranking, but you can just see how this works. Let's open up one with a bit more links. So this one, 173. So you can see here that has links from the home page and this URL and this URL and this URL and so on to this page. You can see, obviously, it's all one single page. You can see the anchor text of that link. You can see the alt text, if any, whether it's do follow or, or no follow, and the, the path type and the link path. Now you don't really necessarily need to understand all of this. The only thing I really use out of this is this link position and possibly the link path just to set custom link positions. So you can see here, most of these like navigation, 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 but a couple of these here are content, which again, if you're looking at like a weight and importance are more important because they were in content more so, especially than like navigation and head and so on, okay? So that's basically how we can find all this information inside of Screaming Frog. The downside being is that, that can be 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 internal links across the entire site, especially if it's a big site. So it's kind of a lot of data to process, which is why we're kind of looking more at averages and stuff rather than page by page by page, like I showed previously. Another simple piece of data we can collect here is called orphan pages, which is basically pages with zero in links, as in zero internal links pointing to this page. By collecting this, we can just go to reports, and then orphan pages, and then go ahead and save that file. Now, if we go ahead and open that up, basically this will just give you a big list of URLs that have no internal links pointing to this page. In this case, thankfully, there are zero on my site. Otherwise, that'd be a really bad example, but I don't do SEO for my site. Now, from here, you have a few options. One, of course, is to build internal links to this page. That's a great option if the page is actually important, but usually speaking, if you have zero in links to this page, it's a good sign the page isn't important. So in many cases, we'll just simply delete and redirect this page or like no index it or do something else with it. It just depends on the situation. And we'll talk more about that in the technical SEO audit and module. But basically, this would just give you a list of pages that have no internal links. Again, that is something that you absolutely want to work on as well. Another thing you need to understand is depth or crawl depth. Essentially, if you have a look at this diagram here, once again, from page one to page two is a depth, as in page two is a depth of one, and page three is a depth of two, right? Because it's one link, it's based on links, right? It's one link from the first page, and the next one is two links from the first page. That is depth, okay? Now again, if you open up Screaming Frog once again, and you'll see this column here called crawl depth, right? And you can see here zero, one, two, and so on. Now, if you go right down to the bottom here, you'll see some of these are like depth of seven. Now, most likely these are not important pages, but see this is actually a podcast page. So podcast slash Jason Duke. So if this was an important page and we say, hey, this is a depth of seven, right? Then maybe we want to go ahead and move that up. Now, how do we move this up? We again, think about this from a silo structure point of view. Can we move this higher up in the silo, right? Because again, this is a really high depth of seven. That means you have to go through seven links before a user, never mind a search engine, can access this page. So it's getting a very low level of page rank, if nothing else. And again, for users, it can also be a pretty bad experience. So based on that, 
can we move this higher up in the silo? So we get, if you imagine, you have to go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven links to get to this. Can we move this a little bit up so it gets more links? Now, in certain cases, it's probably fine. Maybe this page just isn't important whatsoever, so it makes sense to have it in a depth of seven. But in other cases, maybe, hey, this is way too much. This is actually an important page. Let's move this up to two or three or four. It just depends on the page, right? But it's just something to analyze also is the depth of that page. Now that basically wraps up how exactly we build internal links and what things you want to look at when you're building your internal links to decide where to build them. There's also really a whole audition phase of identifying like broken links, links that point to redirects and all sorts of stuff like that. But let's cover that in the next video, which is all about auditing. We'll cover that and also the content auditing, also the fundamentals auditing and all that good stuff. Again, diving back into more of the screaming frog stuff. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe to the channel below so you get notified when the next video comes out. If you like this video, please do me a favor and tap the little like button below. And aside from that, I will see you in my next video.